you mentioned that some folks would not consider Verilator a, a real simulator or a full simulator. What what would be the distinguishing factor between it and maybe some of the proprietary options that are alternatives? Yeah, so one of them is that uh, in order to get faster, it's like a cycle-based simulator. So uh, most simulators are event-based simulators. Um, and so it just like, it's like, you know, like some would argue that's like kind of a hack in order to just like get as, you know, like, yeah, so like certain things with like delays like don't work in very later. Um, I think they're starting to change that. Uh, certain like language constructs like aren't supported as well. Uh, there's an issue with also with encrypted IPs. So if you buy like verification IPs from people or like, you know, if you buy IPs uh, from a third party vendor, they're not just going to give you like the raw source code and stuff. So you have to like have a way of like simulating uh, the design with the IP. And for that, like, very later, just like has no answer for it. So that's like uh, one big pain point that a lot of people have. Uh, it's also not a four state simulator. Uh, it's just a two state simulator, you know, just zeros and ones. Mm -hmm. um, but, and, you know, a lot, you can catch a lot of bugs with like X's and Z's and like whatnot. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. I, I think there's some other stuff there that people don't like about very later as well. It, it doesn't have mixed language support, um, as far as I know. I think it's just only supports like, System Verilog and Verilog, um, no VHDL. Yeah, so I thought, you know, if you have like a Verilog only code base, like it's pretty great. And like you have small enough designs and you can like work around some of those other issues. But yeah, for the most part, if you work at like a large chip company, people aren't doing everything in Verilator. And even at HRT, um, we use proprietary simulators when we ran into some of those issues. Uh, yeah. And, and so would you usually use Verilator as kind of like the uh for, it's just pre-synthesis verification right um and so yeah. would you you do the verilator verification and that would be kind of the uh improved development workflow and and that sort of thing uh and be able to get quick iterations on that and then you go through synthesis and do both synthesis verification as well and was that with proprietary tools uh you know we, we have like a kind of own like lab testing environment that we do uh post-synthesis stuff um for the Verilator, yeah, like the, the attractive feature of, of it was that you could run like a bunch of tests in parallel because you didn't have to worry about uh, like licenses, right? So we could spin out like, you know, each developer just could spin out like tens or hundreds of thousands of tests, like mm. with the press of a button. That was pretty nice. Um, you know, just like distribute it out to like HRT's like a, like a compute cluster uh, and then get results back really quickly. Uh, that was a really nice feature that you couldn't really get if you just only did proprietary um, simulator stuff. But yeah, like before we would ship an image, we would have to run some stuff through like a proprietary simulator, depending on like what project people were working on. Um, sometimes you could just get by with just like the bare layer cookie TV stuff because, you know, uh, there's enough confidence in like some of the other components uh, or just enough confidence in the components that, uh, of the testing that was already done. So um, yeah.